kind of fresh hell is this? It's like using the beta version of Windows 7. Oh, God. Well, it's time. Windows 8.1. Not particularly loved by the community, but unlike Vista, people haven't started seeing it as a diamond in the rough. I can see why. But I've already done all the loved operating systems, so let's go through the shit list. Exhibit A, the Mac Mini. Okay, why are you using a Mac Mini? I'm so glad you asked. I was using this old family PC, but I installed Tiny11 on it and it just died. So I had to go out and find another PC, found this Mac Mini, which I have no idea what it is because it didn't come with Mac OS installed, but I assume it's going to support Windows 8 just because a leap of faith. But I'd put Windows 10 on it to play Most Wanted. Anyways, I had to download Windows 8.1 first, which is still available on the official Microsoft website. Try to download the Windows 8.1 USB tool, which is taken down for some reason. But no worries, we can use Rufus to make this USB bootable. Plugged it in and got to installing Windows 8.1, which it wouldn't let me format the hard drive, something about GPT partitions or whatever. But after deleting all the partitions, it worked. And within a few minutes, we're at the desktop. Although this is the longest I've seen a Windows installation take, but this is also the first time I've seen the desktop in full HD without drivers, so... You win some, you lose some. But, like I said, I already figured out last time what Mac Mini this is from the serial number, and this is a late 2012 Mac Mini. And we do have bootcamp drivers for Windows 8.1, which if your Mac only supports Windows 7, those bootcamp drivers will not work on any other operating system, even though these operating systems are not that different from each other, it's just that Apple's a dickhead. But anyways, I downloaded them on my laptop, put it on a pen drive, and the Mac Mini doesn't detect it. For some reason, Windows 8's default USB drivers are f***ed. Everything gets detected as EFI or whatever. But it does detect this hard drive. So I got the drivers over, and yep, we have everything working like sound, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. So I always update these Windows installations with Legacy Update, because sometimes some software doesn't work without the latest updates. And Legacy Update is the place to update your operating systems as old as XP. Basically anything based on Windows NT and up. So I downloaded it, and it kept failing. Repeatedly. This is the first time Legacy Update has failed and I have no idea why. And it is impossible to troubleshoot, because let's just be honest, there's such a tiny niche little problem that literally no one on the planet probably ran into. So for now, I'm just gonna let it be and come back to it. Okay guys, we need to completely revolutionize this shit with Windows 8, like fully blow people's minds. Make the OS more efficient? Nah. Let's build more in-house features like RAR file expansion. Shut up. Let's get rid of the start menu. That's fucking brilliant, right there. That's why you make the money, Steve. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Why is the start menu just gone? And this is Windows 8.1. Apparently with Windows 8, it would boot right into the start menu. You know, usually I'm the optimist, like, oh, Windows Vista wasn't so bad, but I do not like Windows 8. Is this radically different for absolutely no goddamn reason? Why is it this way? Well, let's rewind the clock a bit. Around the 2010 era, tablets are the hot new thing, cuz the iPad, and people were predicting that the keyboard and mouse were gonna be done, cuz touchscreens are the hot new thing. And Windows decided to go all in on this. They already had the Windows phone, which if you know what happened to it, it was probably a bad idea to base an entire desktop operating system on it, but hindsight is 2020. The next release was gonna go full blown on this concept of touch and mobile devices, with them announcing that it would be the first Windows operating system to support ARM processors. The problem is that most people who upgraded to Windows 8 did not have touchscreen devices. Most of us normies were stuck with a keyboard and mouse. And as for the prediction that the future was all touch-based, I have my doubts about it. It's pretty clear that this whole interface was designed to be used primarily with the touchscreen, but I don't understand why Microsoft couldn't just make a different edition for tablets and a different edition for desktops. It's not rocket science, it's almost like coercing people into some future, which turns out wasn't even the right future. Microsoft did address a lot of the issues that people had with Windows 8.1, which is kind of like a service pack, but Microsoft classifies that as a different operating system, but technically it was an update, so... It is far more usable in this form, but honestly, it's still a little unstable and sluggish compared to Windows 7 on this same exact configuration. So like always, it's time to bust out some games on this Mac Mini. But first, we'll go through the specs. This is a late 2012 Mac Mini with an Intel Core i5-3210M and 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM. The graphics, well, are the integrated Intel HD 4000 graphics with about 1.7 gigs of shared memory. Not exactly a powerhouse, even back in the day. I tried connecting my Xbox One controller, which it did connect, and it kind of did work as well, but it was very flaky. Although it would absolutely not work on Windows 7, and apparently Windows 10 is the first operating system to officially support this controller. But anyways, I installed Steam, which unsurprisingly works, because it worked on Windows 7 as well. But it seems to be ending support alongside Windows 7. Queued a few game downloads, but I wanted to try GTA 5, because shockingly, the latest Grand Theft Auto is from Windows 8's era. 
but I never bought it on PC. So I got a product key off of G2A, which I'm not sponsored by them, they just have really cheap product keys, queued the game download, which is 120 gigs, and the download failed like three times because the computer went to sleep. Also, just a side note, I installed the Rockstar Games launcher or whatever, but it got stuck on this Visual C++ package. So I thought, hey, let me just restart the computer. But it started installing updates, and when it booted back up, Windows Update was fully functional. A bit bizarre, but the reason why a legacy update kept failing was probably because of this missing Visual C++ package. But once it was installed, everything started working. So yes, now this Windows 8 copy is fully updated. But anyways, while GTA 5 was downloading, I went to install Origin to get a few more game downloads. But I've been out of the circle for so long that I didn't know that Origin is shut down. You have to get the EA app, which is basically the same login and stuff, and it still works on Windows 8 even though it was released like last year, and queued a few more game downloads. Okay, first up is GTA 5, which started in the small window, and I thought it was going okay-ish, but you have to keep in mind that these indoor scenes are the easiest to render. As soon as I got out in the world, oh boy the frame rate tanked, even at this 800 by 600 resolution. But I decided to go full screen anyways, and running the benchmark, yeah, this is not gonna be playable. Although, I don't think this is Windows 8's fault. How much can you expect from the integrated graphics? Next up is Most Wanted 2012, which I made my feelings clear about this game last time. I like it, but it's a disgrace to the Most Wanted name. But yeah, it runs exactly like it did on Windows 7. Not better, and not worse. As for the game itself, for all its flaws, at least it has good music. Okay, next up is Batman Arkham Origins, which people hate on, but honestly, I don't get it. I love this game. Although it was already struggling in the Batcave, so it wasn't at all surprising that the frame rate just tanked in the open world. But I always assumed it was the same world and game engine as Batman Arkham City, but that game was doing far better on this setup on Windows 7, so I don't know. These games we're trying are a little bit more recent, and more in line with Windows 8's era, which seems to be a bit too much for this poor computer to handle. I tried Hot Pursuit next, the original, not the remaster. I have to disclaim that, because honestly if someone didn't tell me, I couldn't tell the difference between the original and the remaster. But yeah, it plays fine. And finally, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. I always love the Call of Duty Modern Warfare series, although I've never really been a COD guy. It started off at 1080p, which is a big no-no for this PC, but bringing it down to 720p? Yeah, it's a much more playable experience. So around here we do things legally, and that means I'm gonna spend money on a 10 year old operating system that I don't even like for your viewing pleasure. Which it's a good thing I installed Windows 8.1, cause I couldn't even find anyone selling keys for Windows 8. But hopping back on our good old friend G2A, they do sell Windows 8.1 keys for a semi reasonable price. It's actually not reasonable at all cause Windows 11 is literally 5 bucks more. Please like and subscribe so I can hopefully recuperate my 20 bucks. But yeah, I bit the bullet and it worked. It has to work. Cause fun fact, you can still buy and activate Windows 7 in 2023, even though support ended in January 2023. So this is the part where I'm usually like, it's not so bad, it was actually underrated, people just be wild and nah, they were actually onto something. Windows 8 is, is, is... Okay, it's not like a completely unusable, unstable mess, but it's not like a hidden gem or whatever. It's just kind of bleh. Although Windows 8 was actually quite a big blunder, we just don't care about it as much as Vista. Its market share never even cracked 10% at its peak, which Windows Vista was 25% at its peak. Although weirdly enough, Windows 8.1 is counted as a different operating system, and its peak is sitting at 20%, so... I mean, we've talked about this yin and yang of Microsoft. Windows ME sucks. Windows XP is great. Windows Vista sucks. Windows 7 is great, so they were bound to fuck up with Windows 8. Like, Windows 8.1 fixed a lot of problems, but the core direction of the operating system was just wrong, and putting band-aids on these problems is never gonna make for a great OS. Microsoft didn't really cling on to it for too long, and cut support for it alongside Windows 7, even though it released three years after Windows 7, with absolutely no plans to extend support. But yeah, Windows 8 is dead, and while I don't hate it, I'm not gonna miss it either. 